Yo, what's up guys? It's Chris with American Fitness. I uh, just wanted to make a little video vlog today about motivation. I've had a lot of people coming up to me lately being like, Hey Chris, man, you got Jack. Can you, can you help me get Jack? I love those people. You know, I love them. They come up to me and ask for help. You know, they, they obviously have some desire. Um, they want to make some positive changes in their life. And, and I say, yeah, you know, I can, I can absolutely tell you what you need to do in order to make that change happen for yourself, you know, and to make good things happen. Like, okay, okay, good. You know, and they're all excited and stuff, and they, they feel good. Most people, uh, you know, think that, that that feeling right there at the beginning, that that's inspiration, that's motivation. And really, it's just the spark of what you need to get started. Because what happens with these people is they're flashing the pan. You know, they say they're, they're all about it for like two or three days, if I'm lucky. Because um, they come out, and they, you know, they want to know everything, and they're hungry, and then they, and they burn out in two seconds because they don't have the intrinsic motivation to continue going. Motivation comes in different forms. Um, there's the kind of motivation that says, uh, I set a goal. You know, I say, I, I want to lose 20 pounds for whatever reason. And uh, and then you kind of dream about that. You know what I mean? You're like, all right, this is what I'm going to look like. This is the, the clothes I'm going to wear. This is how it's going to be. You know, um, this is the way people are going to look at me or the way they're going to think about me. And you, you develop that image in your head. That's one of the best kinds of goals. The worst kind of goal is the goal like that that just goes on paper. You know, somebody says, I want to lose 20 pounds. And then it stays on paper. They don't think about it in their mind. They don't build it up for themselves, you know. Because um, paper doesn't motivate people, you know. You can sit down and write a list of every freaking goal you want to do. You know, kids sit down, people sit down and write bucket lists all the time. And it's like, you know, half that stuff you're never going to do because you're never going to dream about it. It's fun for the first 15 seconds. But after you're like, yeah, I'll be 20 pounds lighter. Like, you know, what are you going to do? I said I wanted to be 210 pounds. You know, I started out pretty skinny guy. Uh, I 165 pounds, always small. Like I, you know, I was I was five three, uh, 130 pounds when I was 15 years old. You know, and now I'm six one, two twelve. Um, and I got I got sick of it. You know, I got sick of being skinny, and I got sick of not um, of knowing that I was capable of something that I wanted, and not going to get it. It was convenient that I liked weightlifting because that's kind of um, you know what you have to do to gain weight. So you know I set myself a goal. I said you know I'm going to lose. I'm going to in 2009. I said I'm going to gain 25 pounds in the next year, and I I worked. I worked really hard, and it took me about 14 months to get there. You know, but I uh, I got there. I still I still didn't look like what I wanted to look like. Um, which brings me to the second part of motivation, which is uh, being able to adjust uh, adjust your goals. You know, you have to be able to set a, a, a goal that you can build up in your mind that really tugs at your heart. But it can't be the only thing. Because once I got to 210, I said, all right, what do I do now? You know, where do I go from here? And I feel like what happens with people is either they don't build it up in their mind enough or they don't set a goal that's far enough out there that it keeps them going for a long enough time. So you have to, you have to set a, a stretch goal, you know. I, I mean, my ultimate goal was 210, and now I'm here, and I'm like, all right, dude, can I keep going, man? Because I love the process now. Um, that's the, uh, the third part of motivation is loving the process. You have to love getting up and doing what you're doing every day. You know, people, sometimes they come to me and they say, Chris, I couldn't, I could never do what you do. I can never have the kind of dedication or you know, work like you do. But the, the truth of the matter is that when you're doing something you love, it's not work. I tell those people, you know, maybe la <laughs> weightlifting probably isn't for you. If you don't, if you don't dig it every time you get to the gym and go, man, I could freaking do this all day. Like I'll be at the gym for two hours and not want to go home. I don't want to go home afterward because I love the process that much. And I sit down to meals and I love picking the right foods and I love getting enough rest just knowing that I'm growing every single time I'm doing the right thing. I'm making myself healthier, happier, stronger, growing, you know, for, for mentally and physically. For, for my entire life, building habits that are going to last my entire life. You know, I, I look at pictures of like, you know, 70-year-old guys who still have muscles, and I'm like, yeah, I want that to be me, you know. Um, you got to find something like that. If fitness is that for you, that's fantastic, and you and I are, are going to get along really, really well <laughs> because I can absolutely help you there. I've spent almost six years now um, shoveling through piles and heaping piles of bullshit trying to figure out what the right things were to do um, and how to approach it to create long-term success. And that's what I'm going to try to give to you guys through this video blog, you know. Because um, there's a million lies out there. And those lies honestly make it make it that much more difficult to stay motivated. Because you think something's going to work and then it's disappointing when it doesn't. Fourth part of motivation, overcoming obstacles, you know. If something doesn't work, you can't just sit down. You can't let it beat you. You can't say, oh, I guess it, I guess I can't. 
you got you have to look at pictures of people who've done what you want to do and know that you can do it in your heart you know I, I set a realistic goal I picked people who are my height and the size I wanted to be and I said okay I'm gonna study what they do and I did and surprise surprise I got results from it because I was realistic you know I said um, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm, if it sounds like bullshit then I'm gonna criticize it and I'm gonna figure it out you know um, you people come up to you know, you know bro science like people come up and they say things outrageous things all the time um, that make total sense to them and they do and you can't fault them for that not at all um, but the fact of the matter is that they don't work. You know, you may have a you may have a guy who is genetically predisposed to being larger, giving advice to a skinny guy, um, telling him to you know eat what he eats or, or uh, you know lift the way he lifts, and he can't because he's got a different body type. So you have to put in put in the time and energy to find out what it is that works for you, ideally. Um, you know, for me, uh, starting out as a real skinny guy, I gotta eat huge amounts of food, but I also have to eat huge amounts of protein. Um, you know, a lot of people. A lot of people completely ignore protein, and uh, if you're going to get fit, you can. You have to. That's that is your number one nutrient. Period. End of story. Protein, vegetables, and then start thinking about other things. <laughs> um, but I had to eat huge amounts of food. You know, if I if I was trying to eat with a guy who was trying to lean out, it would make I wouldn't make any. I wouldn't. I would not have gotten any results at all. Is what I'm saying. But there was a long time where I tried to eat. You know what I thought I needed to eat. Like I said, protein. I was eating, but I was eating tons of fruit. Tons of pasta, stuff like that. You know, I still have friends now who eat tons of pasta. And they're like, I, I can't put on a pound. Sorry, bro. You, you, I mean, your muscles are made out of something. <laughs> and it's not its not rice. It's not wheat. It's not any of those things, you know. It's its um, its um, meat. So you got to eat what you want to be, I guess. <laughs> Don't eat ice cream. Um, so uh, let me think. So we've got we've got some good stuff about motivation on there. I would say um, when it, when it really comes right down to it, I think loving the process is the most important part because for me it has nothing to do it has nothing to do with uh, reasons. You know, it's not like looks, it's not status, it's not any of those things. It's just I like to grow and I love the lessons that I learn along the way. Because the problem with having reasons like that is that once the reason's gone, the motivation's gone too. So if you if your like reason is to lose 20 pounds and then you don't have a, a goal that you can set again then you lose those 20 pounds and you're done, it's over. Um, and then of course you're gonna gain the weight right back. You know that's always what happens. Or, or you know, realistic is also important. People will um, choose goals that are completely unrealistic for their body type and then get continually discouraged and continually discouraged along the way. So motivation comes from being realistic which takes time and effort to do. You have to be willing to learn and you got to accept the fact that you're going to mess up. It's just going to happen. But take the lessons that you learn and be encouraged by those and love the fact that you're getting those. Because in the end, that's what's going to make it all worthwhile. You know, knowing that knowing that you have the capacity to go out and change yourself by a process that you have perfected. <laughs> you know how to learn now. That's the biggest thing that you're going to get from this approach. Real quick, uh, before I get out of here, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my uh, my personal um, method for goal setting. You guys have probably heard of SMART goals. Um, what what is it? Um, I can't I can't remember what SMART stands for. I don't like it. What I like is I I call it SCAR. All right, S C A R. It's uh, systematic, calculated, adaptable, and rational. Systematic means that you can break it down into pieces. So I've got a goal. I want to get to this place, and then I determine exactly the steps that need to be. Uh, done along the way. So that's calculated. So calculated is you have steps broken down. Systematic is you have a system for achieving it, something that you can repeat consistently on a daily basis to get there. Calculated is you know the steps. Adaptable is that once you get there, you can reset the goal. So you can make it a little bit, um, you can expand it. You know, you know that you can move past it. Or if you fall really short and you need to set an intermediate goal, you can adapt it down. Your goals have got to be adaptable. If they're completely set in stone, um, if you don't make it, then you quit. You know, because you, because you, you think you can't. You need to be able to move your goals up and down. And the final one is rational. It has got to be something that you can believe. It has to be something that you can envision in your mind. I cannot say this enough. If it does not tug at your heart, and if it does not get you out of bed first thing in the morning, if it doesn't make you go to bed later at night or earlier. Whatever you know, if you need to get more rest, you got to do that. If you need to, if you need, but if you need to stay up till midnight, because that's the only time you have to go to the gym, you got to do that too. Um, 
It's got to be. It's got to be rational, believable in your brain and in your heart. That's all I got for you guys today. You know, uh, definitely write in. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Uh, throw throw out some questions for me. Uh, I got I got tons of stuff just exploding, ready to be shared with the world. So, um, again, it's Chris with American Fitness. I had a great time today. Uh, I'll catch you on the flip side.